so there's this new constitution that that has been created at this point and um christopher isherwood this legendary author who was writing in berlin at the time and who uh cabaret was later based on you know his writings he wrote a book called i am a camera about his time in berlin as a journalist and that is what uh, i am a camera was the name of the stage play that then became a film and then they later adapted that into cabaret so there is a 1953 yeah. film with Lawrence Harvey, and I can't remember the woman's name. I'm drawing a blank. I can picture her. Something with a J. But yeah, so there, if you're a huge cabaret fan, there is another film of the same story that uh, has a beautiful Kurt Vile song in there that I've never heard anywhere else called In a Cafe in Berlin. Hmm. Another yeah. amazing artist of that period, Kurt Vile. Um, so he's he was basically talking about this new liberal atmosphere. Why were there such shifts in legislation? You had like very left and right extremes happening at this time. So you had well, like the country was decimated, you know, I mean, like, look at what's happening right now. You know, like when people get polarized and it pulls far apart, you had um, the very, very. Uh, you know, this is the cliche of when people talk about like things now being like then it's because you had where the liberal artist community was going really hard one direction. And then what we would call maybe the either working class or money were kind of banding together and pulling to another direction. And the working class was getting completely usurped by the financial structures at that time. Mm -hmm. And then the, the creative community was taking it completely over the cliff. Like you had Anita Berber shooting heroin up on stage. Like it was as insane as it, anybody who thinks they're edgy. Like when we talk about an Alice Cooper or like Ozzy Osbourne or any of the, the legendary stuff, like Anita Berber was really doing it. It was mm -hmm. very, uh, what's the word? All of the liberation surrounding censorship, the, the arts community took massive advantage of that. And so when you're talking about why, was, why were there such polarizing elements is that you had standing over this wreckage, um, you know, everyone was kind of fighting for the scraps. And that's why, like the Deutschmarks plummeted from, you know, it was like maybe, you know, 200 Deutschmarks to get a loaf of bread or, you know, to buy a meal. And um, then that plummeted to like 200 million. I, I mean, it's crazy. I actually looked it up by late 1923. So the year that these artworks from this book were made, mm -hmm. the dollar was worth over 4 billion marks. Yeah, that's, you know, so what basically happened is then you had uh, an economy that sprung up. It was a black market economy. You also had then a labor-based economy. And, you know, it was a really, it was a hard time. I think the most important thing to remember is people survived. And it, it didn't devolve into like a Mad Max type scenario. But politically, maybe it did, but on a human level, and this is kind of where this book fits, I think, mm -hmm. is it's almost like when you look at Twitter now or you look at, you know, crazy, weird political stuff and you realize like that doesn't affect your lunch and it doesn't necessarily affect what you're doing with your family that day. And that there was a huge, huge audience in Germany of people that were very, very in the middle on all of this and had very sophisticated and complicated opinions, um, but weren't battling it out the way that some of the political factions were. Mm 